Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Andy, a petrophysicist based in the UK. And on this channel I am exploring various aspects of geoscience, petrophysics and Python. And in today's video we're going to look at a particular kind of plot called a scatter plot, also known as a cross plot within the petrophysics and geoscience domains. I'm unsure why we would need two names for the same plot, but if you know, let me know down in the comments below. In the notebook section, we will see how to take some last data and create a scatter plot going from this to this. And that is all done through customization by adding labels, color using a third variable, and by applying themes from matplotlib. Scatter plots are a commonly used data visualization tool that allow us to plot one variable against another. And from that, we can determine if there is any correlation or relationship between the two variables. We will also be able to tell the strength of that relationship. Scatter plots or cross plots are a commonly used tool within petrophysics. They can be used to identify outliers, lithology identification, and fluid identification such as light hydrocarbon effects on density neutron cross plots. We can also use them for regression analysis. So let us now jump over to our Jupyter notebook and see how to create scatter plots and customize it using matplotlib. Here we are in our Jupyter notebook where we will go through the steps of creating a scatter plot using matplotlib. So the first step with any of our projects is to import the libraries that we are going to use. For this particular tutorial, we will be using pandas, which will be used to store our data, matplotlib, which will be used for visualizing our data, and finally, lasio, which is a library developed specifically for loading and manipulating last files. Parts of this library were discussed and covered in my first YouTube video, and you can find the link in the description down below if you want to go view that and see how to explore the contents of a last file. We will now run the cell. And we can see that it is run when we have the numeric value within the square brackets. So once these have been imported, we need to import our data, which is from the publicly available Volve dataset. And this dataset contains well logs from over 20 wells that were drilled within the Norwegian North Sea. They were released by Equinor in 2018 to promote learning, research and development. And you can find a link to the Equinor website for more details in the description below this video. So to load our file, we create a variable called LAS and then read it in the file using lasio.read. Within the brackets, we pass in the location of the file as a text string. To make it easy to work with the data, we first need to convert it to a pandas data frame by calling las.df. Then to check the contents of the file, we can use df.describe, which will return back a table containing summary statistics about the data. We can see from the returned results that we have several columns of data. Each column contains measurements that have been taken whilst the logging tools have been moved along the wellbore. For this tutorial we are going to focus on DEN, which is the bulk density, NEU, which is the neutron porosity, and AC, which is the acoustic compressional slowness. Also, if we want to, we can view the first 10 rows of the data using df.head and passing in the value of 10. And here we can see the results from that. We can see the first 10 rows within the data frame. Only the GR column contains actual numeric values. All the other ones contain NAN values or not a number. And this indicates that the data is missing at this particular section. We will now move on to creating our plot. We will work through the creation of a density versus neutron porosity plot. This is a commonly used petrophysical plot for determining key interpretation parameters, identifying outliers, and also identifying hydrocarbons that may be present within the formations that have been logged. We will start with the most basic form of the scatter plot and then work our way up to making it more visually appealing. To start, we can call upon plt.scatter and pass in an x value, which in this case is NEU, a y value, which is DEN, and also our data source, which is DF. We can optionally use plt.show, however it is not necessary in Jupyter Notebooks. I have just used it to tidy the output. So once we run the cell, we can see that we have a very simple, but not a very informative scatter plot. There are no labels to tell us what the data is, and the limits on the plot are not set to the standard that we commonly use when we work with this plot. But before we change any of that, we can set the size of our figures to be a certain size. And this will make it easier to view as we progress through this notebook. And this is achieved by calling upon plt.rcparams and passing in figure.figsize is equal to 8 by 8. And that will be the size of our plot. So now we can move on to modifying our plot. And the first thing we will do is change the axis limits. 
For the x-axis, we will set the range from minus 5 to 60. And for the y-axis, we will change it to 3 to 1.5. And you will note that the values here have been put in back to front. And this allows us to invert the y-axis. So going from 3 at the bottom of the plot to 1.5 at the top. And this is done so that when we move from the bottom left of the chart to the top right, the inferred porosity increases until we reach a fluid point at 100% neutron porosity and 1.0 grams per cc on the density. So when we run the cell, we generate the following plot, but we still do not have much information about what each axis represents. So for this, we need to add labels to our plot. And we can do so by using plt.y label and plt.x label. We pass in a text string and also optionally we can pass in a font size. So for our y axis we're calling it bulk density and we're putting in the column name in brackets and then the units. For the x label we're calling it neutron porosity and then passing in NEU in brackets and a value of percent for the units. This now generates a plot where we know what data is plotted on each axis and it also provides information about the units. The next step is to add some depth to our plot and we will do this using colour. And this allows us to add a third variable which can be used to gain much more information about the data. So to achieve this, all we do is pass in a C or colour argument and we'll pass in the GR column from our data frame or gamma ray but we can also pass in two additional arguments, vmin and vmax, and this allows us to set the limits of the color bar or the color range. So after the cell is run, we now have a decent looking plot, but we do not know whether the blues in the plot represent high or low gamma ray values. And to solve that, we can add what is known as a color bar. And this will add a single rectangle that will be attached to the plot and contains the full range of colours used in the plot along with the values. To achieve this we can add a single line of code plt.colorbar and pass it a label argument so that we know what variable was plotted on that axis. We can also pass in a colour map and you can find a link in the notebook that will take you to the matplotlib documentation which contains the colour maps that are available to you. So for this particular example I'm using the rainbow colour map. Now, when we run the cell, we have our color bar and the correct scales associated with it. So we can now see that the purple blue values indicate lower gamma ray values, which is typically our sandstones and limestones, and the red representing higher gamma ray values, which is typically our shale intervals. We can make one final adjustment to our plot to make it more visually appealing, and that is by adding grid lines and also a background color. And we can do this by applying a style to the plot. So in this case I'm using the style BMH and you can find details of all the different styles available including the Seaborn style from the link provided in the notebook here. When we run the cell we have a much better looking plot than the one we started with. The background colour has changed to grey which helps bring out some of the paler coloured data points. Grid lines have also been added onto the plot and we can use these to more accurately estimate the, the values of certain points. But before we finish this notebook, we can look at how to change the variables being plotted. So in this example, we're going to plot acoustic compressional against the density. And we do that by changing the x value to AC and we change the x limits from 40 to 240 and also update the x label. Now we can see we have a consistent format to our plots. If we are happy with this plotting style, we can then convert it to a simple function where all we have to do is pass in the data and the scales but we will leave that for a future video. And there we have it, we've seen how to create a scatterplot using Python and the library called matplotlib. We have seen how to take a basic scatterplot and customize it by adding labels to the axes to give more information and also to add a third variable to give some color to our plot. And we can use that to infer new insights from the data. If you want to go through the notebook in your own time, you can find a link to the notebook in the description down below. But wait, don't click off this video just yet. If you have liked this content or liked any of the other videos that are on this channel, then be sure to click that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when new videos are uploaded to this channel. If you want to see how to explore and load last files, then click on this video up here. If you want to see how to create histograms using the same last file, you can click on this video down here. Thanks for watching and bye for now.